Columbia University student, editor-in-chief of the university's newspaper, Columbia Sundown. Jonas Du joins me. Good evening, sir. And tell me, um, out of the protesters, looking across the crowd, what percentage would you say are Barnard Columbia students, or are there outsiders that have come in? So here's the thing. This whole week, the administration announced that they were, in fact, going to close the gates and restrict access to only people with Columbia University IDs. So the videos you see from inside campus, those are all Columbia or Barnard students. So it's truly astonishing when you consider some of the things that are happening, some of the things they've been chanting, and the protests that have been happening outside the gates, the ones where you see the images of the flares um, and some of the NYPD officers and confrontations, those have both Columbia students and students from um, uh, around New York City. All right, I, I read what they are chanting. I mean, put the words up on the screen. Of course, I can hear them as well. Um, is there something they want specifically besides to yell their chants? Well, they're demanding a couple of things. The protest on campus, especially the encampment, they're focused on promoting divestment. They want Colombia to divest from all companies with Israeli ties or companies they see as supporting what they call Israeli apartheid. They also want to cancel our dual degree program with Tel Aviv University. And we're also opening a global center in Tel Aviv and they want that canceled as well. So, so there's a couple of demands that they want and they stated that they weren't going to leave until the university met those demands. Evidently, Manish Shafiq, um, that had crossed the line for her, and so she called in the NYPD this afternoon. All right, if these are all students inside the gates, prior to October 7th, where were these students, and were they terrorizing Jewish students? I mean, what was going on with these students? Well, I would say October 7th was really what mobilized uh, this effort together. Um, it's really what sparked all of this campus anti-Semitism that we've been seeing. I think anti-Semitism has always been present at Columbia just because we have such a large Jewish student population. But with the conflict and with October 7th, all of that has now come into the open. And now people are unafraid to say things like intifada, to say things like from the river to the sea, because so many students are espousing these kinds of beliefs. Are they pro-Palestinian or pro-Hamas? Well, that's, that's the real question, and that's something I'm very interested in learning as well. And on one hand, I've talked to a lot of people, I've interviewed a lot of people for the Columbia Sundial, and they are genuine people who support, you know, Palestinian self-determination. You can have a reasonable conversation with them. But on the other hand, there are people who are leading chants and getting a lot of other people to join them, saying things like, we don't want no two states, uh, we want it all. Um, things uh, basically saying by any means necessary, supporting you know Hamas terrorist attacks, uh, or even inviting people af with affiliated with foreign terrorist organizations to come speak on campus. And in fact, that resulted in the suspension of a couple students. So I think there are both. I think the majority right. of the campus probably identify as pro-Palestinian, but there's a substantial pro-Hamas portion as well. Jonas, do thank you very much for joining me, sir. Thank you so much.